Okay, my friends, let's just start it with this. This is the Royal Institution. I want you to listen to what Sabine Hassenfelder has to say about medicine and physics. This is more important than you will ever imagine. Now, listen to this. It's exactly what she has to say. That, that particularly interests you. One example which I've always found very exciting is that you can use particle accelerators to treat cancer, which is something that a lot of people don't really know about. Um, so usually um, cancer treatments would work with radiation therapy, so electromagnetic waves, but you can also do it with particles um, that have to have a fairly high velocity, which is why you need the particle accelerator for it. And the benefit of doing this is that they will deposit the energy in the tissue in a very targeted range, um, and that's particularly useful for um, brain tumors. And there are quite a few particle accelerators which have a side program where they will actually treat patients. Uh, now, of course, you know, running <laughs> these particle accelerators is hugely expensive, and there are only, you know, a dozen people per year which uh, will get treated. Now, this is what I want to speak about. I had no idea whatsoever they were treating people with these particle accelerators because I'm telling you right now light is a particle and I will prove that to you in a second and light can accelerate that is a particle accelerator right there that's the light and it's a particle and it is accelerating absolutely no question whatsoever and this is the particle right here and this happens just before it concusses it shows up as the black and white particle which it is it is a particle and it actually explodes at the venturi right here and the black and the white ball separate from each other and the black will not go through the venturi if it's tuned correctly this right here creates enough energy that will if you focus that on a brain tumor i can't imagine that tumor existing in the you know in your molecular range in the cellular range look at the look at the effect of this energy here let me show you a little better shot okay that's the muon neutrino which is the black ball the white ball is down here the electron neutrino when they come in together and then they crash they separate the black ball goes on its way does not change the white one turns into showers which literally shower everywhere and it because it, this is energetic it bashes that's only gravity that's all this is is dark energy and gravity and it cannot compress concuss I mean well, it concusses but it cannot compress it does not absorb it does not emit it does not reflect and here is literally that effect right here you see that that's the black ball it's separated from the white ball the white turned into the showers The black ball, the muon, didn't change. It stayed just the way it was. That's fission, that's fusion. Right here is atomic, literally atomic energy. Now, if they're looking for focused particle acceleration, I can't imagine anything better than this. All right, so let's sum it up. What do we have? We have light, which is the smallest subatomic particle that they know of. I showed you it's a particle, back-to-back -back black and white balls the particle right here starts to accelerate due to the venturi here they stack up and gain tremendous amounts of energy and then explode at the venturi so what did we have we have particle acceleration zero question about that that's particle and that is acceleration case closed light is a subatomic particle no question I showed you back to back black and white balls that is what a photon is and they are green too and blue as well and I imagine every color is the same photon um, and they get bigger and bigger and bigger in pieces because everything is made out of these one side of this is an electron the other side is an electron but they nobody's ever seen the dark matter before that's the problem now we took the venturi and it created the photon acceleration it also created fission and fusion at the venturi targeted atomic chaos now 
what if we could put that through a possible fiber optic and run it right in through your brain or wherever you need to go up a blood vessel into the organs wherever you can find a mass that needs to be dealt with now I'm talking about CERN and Fermi Lab stuff, and everybody thinks, oh, this guy's talking out of his range. No, absolutely, that is not true. I did this stuff in 1968. I was in Nike Hercules missiles in the, in the Army, and I came up to the conclusion that not a thing was right that was being said about the electrostatic forces that made up the nucleus. It was impossible to have one big gigantic positive core and a bunch of little electrons. And I had all, I mean, I did this as much as anybody there was. And I realized there was no fight in City Hall, and I could not get through to any of my professors or anybody anywhere about what the nature of true of light and everything. Transfer of energy from light is to atomic vapor. The particles I showed are atomic vapor. They're atomic vapor. Atomic means they're little tiny bits of magnetic particles. Therefore, Rutherford's atom was wrong. I was, I, I, I had all, and I, this was my final paper on it. You can see how dog-eared it is. I showed this around a bazillion times. Back then there was no internet. Nobody would give me the time of day. I closed the case on it. I went in my own business. But when I go into a play, I don't go in and I say, oh, I don't have any evidence. I come in with all my work that I did. I come in with all my experiments. I show the actual things that I did and the labs that I did and how the heat and everything reacted. And then I come to the conclusions that everything there is is electric power. All power is electric. And that is exactly what I'm showing you in my stuff. Now, these are particle accelerators. What does it say about a particle accelerator? Particle accelerator propels charged particles, which are those little bits I showed you, light, such as protons or electrons. Protons are just huge bit chunks compared to what I showed you. A proton is 1,839 electrons. And they do it at high speed, close to the speed of light. Well, it is the speed of light, and we exceeded the speed of light, and then we broke those particles apart. By studying these collisions, physicists are able to probe the world of the infinite to infinitely small. And the reason we can see this on these CMOS phones is because of this right here. They turn, they, these, this is it. They take the cell phones, and they turn them into cosmic ray detectors. And that's what we use, the cell phone. It uses the same principles of very large experiments. And it, it, when the particles crash into Earth, they're looking for the things that crash into the Earth. They create showers of secondary particles called muons. They're looking up in the sky to find these particles. We're looking right, right into the interaction and seeing them. It's a whole new ballpark when you get into the range we're in. We are in the sub-subatomic particles. They're crashing protons. We're crashing electrons and photons. Totally way better. And they know that. All right, just to back myself up. Remember I said that this goes back to 1978. They had a, an emergency special meeting on this photon collisions where they wanted to collide electrons with positrons, and they never did it. The, the, the project never materialized. But they wanted to do this years ago. The project never materialized. And this is CERN. And they have done this just by accident, where two protons come and they smack together in just the right way to throw off the particles that I'm showing you. And what we did was we fed them into a venturi. They could nothing else they could do was to throw off the particles. But we started with light, not protons. Now these are, this is CERN, and you get CERN, LHC as a photon collider. Yes, that's correct, photon collider. And this is that Feynman diagram of these, these protons radiating photons that then interact and produce the bosons. The bosons are the black and white balls. The black ball, and the, which is the muon, and the white ball, which is the electron shower. Those are the bosons. Now, as far as using it for medical treatment, there is one thing to consider. They're using huge particles. 
a hundred billion particles at a time colliding and they're getting all kinds of debris. Now I don't know what parts of that debris they're using to do the um, brain surgery or whatever they're doing, you know, trying to break up these brain tumors. Now what are they using? Did they filter something out? I have no idea what they're using. But I can tell you what, we're using light particles. So they started with a chunk like this, which was a big ball, really, of particles. We're starting with this. Right there, that's it. All right? Basically two of them, back to back. Now, they're starting with a whole ball of these which are the many balls of them. How they were getting, maybe they're hitting up with a piece this big. I don't know. But we're going to be able to hit them with particles that are just so small, but so extremely energetic, I can see they should be able to do the job and be so targeted as to be like just right dead nuts on the spot you want to get it. Because we're working with light. They're still working with something that's going to be pretty shattering I would assume and especially when you radiate something when everything gets blasted at the same time now how they're doing their targeting I have no idea but I can show you how we could do our targeting and we might be able to do it through a fiber optic cable and if that could be done and this could be used and the, the, what I'm talking about to produce these little particle accelerators is less than a hundred bucks I mean, this is just absolutely simple. And uh, if they could be targeted like that, whew, boy, would that be something, huh? Okay, so this is my claim. That is light accelerating. That light was a particle, as I showed you. This is where we have to be able to target it. Now, how we're going to target it, I'm not absolutely certain. Um, we could put it on the surface, yes. Obviously, you can put that right on the surface of something, and boom, you're going to get that. Now, how do you get deep into tissue? Can we use fiber optics? I have no idea. There's a lot of people that are very, very clever, and I'm sure we can get something done. Now, particle acceleration. Absolutely, that's what, that's what the Sabine was talking about, is what they're going to use, and they are using it now for brain tumors. But it's so expensive, they can only do a dozen people a year or something like they said. Now, light is a subatomic particle. They're using subatomic particle accelerators. Photons are that subatomic particle, which is called light. The Venturi causes the photons to accelerate. No question whatsoever. We can see it right there. Absolutely none. The fission and the fusion at the Venturi, absolutely no question about that. We saw the black and white particles. They separate, they come back together. Targeted atomic chaos. This is atomic chaos. Absolutely atomic chaos. Now, if you're hitting a cell or something with that, I, you know, I have to assume that's not going to be a pleasant experience for that cell. Now, I can't be absolutely positive of that. But we certainly would want to do some experiments. But I can tell you one thing right now. That is as juiced as you can get. This is pretty well stimulated, these little particles in the air. That is woof. Now, what else can we look at? We're talking possible fiber optics. You feed that in, right? You get it inside the tissues and pew. Focused muon electron showers. That's a muon electron shower. That's exactly what it is. It's fusion and fi uh, fission and fusion. However, we're using electrons. So we started with the tiniest particles. They started out with giant chunks like this. But these chunks, you know, these protons actually consist of 1,839 electrons. We started out with two electrons in the form of one photon. Will that do the job? Are those little chunks enough to really penetrate and kill the stuff that you want to kill with a fiber optic or even laying it right up against it? Will that kill it? I have no idea. But I'm telling you one thing. That is a, that is absolute stunning amount of energy focused on a spot that is absolutely... It has to be so small to slit that the black ball, which is part of the light, cannot fit through there. Only the white can squirt through because the white is gooey. 
All right, literally, and I've shown this many, many times, the white sits right on top of the black. They move together. The white charges up because it and they go flip. And then the, the, the back one, it goes upside down, right? two of them together. Anyway, I've shown it many, many, many times. So this, can, this is squishy. This says, hey, I can go through there. He said, I can't, I can't make it. He said, well, see you later. Out it goes. And this keeps going, because we've got pulsing, pulse, 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 pulse. And it's almost like a, a, a syringe pew, 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 squirting these out. That's all I can tell you. And we can see it. It's, it's, it's visual. So it's not something that's just theory and speculation and uh, academic. This is actual, I, I do things material. That's what I am, a material scientist. Academics work on theory and formulas and little doodles and all that stuff. I, I'm done with that. <laughs> I'm way past that now. Okay, if anybody knows Don Lincoln, I'd love to speak to him about this acceleration and about the muons and so forth. I'm not getting through and um, if anybody can help, I'd certainly like to be able to show my evidence.